Hey everyone, Steve Pixler again. I want to do another video in this journey series. And this is a video that may actually spawn a lot more videos. I want to talk about your family. As the truck goes by. <laughs> I'm definitely in a busy, a busy place in downtown Mansfield. So we'll just roll with it. How about that? Okay. I want to talk about your family. Now, this is another big question that comes up. People ask, how do you navigate this change and it not cost you your marriage, cost you your relationship with your kids? And I'm going to have to say, starting off, that a lot of times people go into this, this transition with family relationships that are already unhealthy. And if you do, you've got to understand that you're about to put a lot of pressure on already fragile relationships. And so there is going to be fallout. This is why I advise a lot of people to wait. To be honest with you, Gina and I would not have survived this process if our marriage hadn't been strong. 100%, no, 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 1 billion percent, the reason I'm still here today is because Gina was my strength. She was my rock. It seemed like we, we were on the seesaw a lot. When I would be up, she would be down. When, she, um, when I was up, she was down. When I was down, she was up. Try to get that right. Um, but I can't tell you, it seemed like I was down more than she was. And, and there were a lot of times through these, this process that she prophesied my tail up out of the floor. I'm telling you, just prophesied me back to life. Just spoke life into me and said what God was going to do. And, and she's a powerful woman of God. I can't wait for you to see her in some of these videos. But she's a powerful woman of God, a very called of God, as called to ministry as I am. She is not. I tell our church, this is not your pastor's wife. This is not first lady. No, no, no. This is Pastor Gina. This girl rocks. She's powerful when she speaks. I'm telling you, worlds move. God does crazy things through Gina. She's a powerful woman of God. And so unassuming, you would never know that when you met her. She just seems so, she's just the life of the party, a lot of fun. Um, but man, when she begins to speak, I'm just telling you, people come alive. And our church can tell you that. She's powerful. So going into this, if it hadn't been for our marriage being as strong as it was and our relationship with our kids as good as it was, I don't know how we would have made it through it. And so I want to say going in, if you're already in a negative family situation, you really may want to hold your peace, bide your time and wait a little bit and start going to a counselor, start trying to get those relationships stronger before you start trying to make the kind of change that could really wreck your family. Now, some people, part of the problem in your family is the tension that exists within your family because uh, you're a part of the one that's Pentecostal movement. Maybe you're in a church that's very controlling. Or maybe you're in a, that's a 55 Chevy just went by. Anyway, uh, maybe you're in a church that's very controlling or, or maybe you're, um, you're in a place where there's, you know, your children are very divided. You've got one that's very bought into the, to the Pentecostal way, others that are so tuned out. And, and in those situations, you're really going to have to navigate very carefully how you lead your family through this transition. But I will tell you, you've got to do whatever it takes to keep your family whole. Um, you've got to do whatever it takes. Move as slow as you need to. Remember the story I shared in another video about Jacob who told Esau, we can't go with you. After they had reconciled, Esau said, come with me, we'll protect you. Jacob said, we can't move at your pace. I have women and children. I have older people, babies. We have people that can't move as fast as you. And so in every movement, this includes a family, you have some who are out ahead. You have some who are lagging behind. And when you're, when you're walking through this, you really have to seek God for how to move at his pace. And this can really be challenging. If there's division in the home, you're, you're going to see um, heightened tension overall. Just not, ju not just to do with the transition, but the transition will actually bring to the surface what is there. So pray your way through that and really be careful as you walk through it. Now I have some things I've written down to share with you about some things I think you could do that could help your family. And this is just a sampling. I'm sure there's a lot of other things. And I would love for you, if, if there's something that helped you and your family through this transition or is helping you now, put it in the comments. Let me hear from you that this is how we 
This is how we made it through. But let me share some things that were important for Gina and me. Number one, don't rush the change. I say this all the time. It's one of the key principles in transition. Don't get in a hurry. Move at God's pace. Don't move at the pace of your frustration. Don't move at the pace of your um, irritation with the world around you, the church around you, whatever. Don't rush the change. Move at a pace that everyone can keep and let the Holy Spirit decide that tempo. Keep in step with the Spirit, Paul said in Galatians chapter 5. Keep in step with the Spirit. So you must walk in the Spirit every day. Number two, keep the presence of God working in your home. Play worship music, preaching videos. I, we'll, get a, we'll get YouTube going on our TV and just let it start playing preaching or playing worship and just fill our home with the Spirit of God. Through the holidays, Gina will even just put on the Hallmark Channel just because it's just these soothing, easygoing kind of movies that are playing in the background. And it's, a, it's about atmosphere. It's about keeping the atmosphere of the home uh, really as peaceful as possible. There were times when Gina and I, we really just wanted to crawl in bed and just curl up and hide from the world. There were some really difficult days. And there were some times when we were kind of in our room for a few hours at a time, trying to pray through things and trying to work through things. But we worked really hard to try to keep the atmosphere of our home as peaceful and as spirit-filled as possible. So keep the healing waters flowing, whatever that takes. It has a lot to do with the words that come out of your mouth. Speak only peace. I'm telling you, just speak only peace. It's challenging. It's almost impossible. There are times when you don't want to say the right thing. You want to say the wrong thing. I'm going to say it if it kills me kind of thing. And it takes time. And you may have to make some things right and go back and repent. And apologize. Say, I'm sorry. Be quick to ask for forgiveness. Keep the presence of God alive in your home. If you're in a divided home, you're going to have to work through what that looks like and pray for wisdom and direction for how to keep the presence of God uh, accessible and nearby in a home that's divided. Number three, this was huge for us because Gene and I have six children from uh, Elena's 22, Natalie's 19, Nicholas is 13, Christopher is 10, then we have seven-year-old twins, Anna and Ella. And when we started this process, of course, this was five years ago when we started the process, our twins were two, you know, Elena's 17, and our, our teenagers especially, Elena and Natalie, they were in a very critical stage. And so one of the things we did, here's advice number three, keep your older kids in the loop. Now the younger kids, obviously, they, they can't know as much detail about some of, the, some of the drama, some of the controversy, but you still can keep them as aware as you pos possibly can while keeping their faith up and keeping them positive. But you also, you can't, be wrestling with some really negative stuff in the background and just always put on a happy face and act like it's not there. There has to be some real awareness and some uh, acknowledgement that there really is something serious going on. Kids sense it, they know it, and if you don't let them know that you're facing some difficult times and hold them close and pray with them and comfort them, let them feel a little bit of your grief. A lot of times when I was so broken, I would just grab one of my, one of my kids and just hold on to them and love them and, and just let their love um, comfort me. And it also was comforting to them to know that while I was going through difficult times, I wasn't pulling away from them. Kids will feel responsible. They'll feel to blame for stuff that's going negative when it has nothing to do with them, but they don't know that. So keep your kids in the loop. The older kids, our older girls, we kept in the loop 100%. We answered any question they had. They wanted to know anything that was going on, unless obviously it was something highly confidential about someone's past. You know, I was a pastor. I couldn't just give up everybody's, you know, tell them everybody's trash. I, I didn't do that. But we did let them ask any questions. We let them vent. We let them rage at times. We let them speak their mind. We didn't shut them down and keep them from processing. But our goal was always to try to move everyone to a place of, of hope and healing and a place of peace. So we also tried to let our girls be a part of the decisions of how we move forward, keep them in the loop on, on decisions that we made regarding the church, regarding um, how we would relaunch, just keeping them in the loop on all of that so that they were very much a part of our overall transition. Another thing that's really huge, especially in a family where you have different children at different 
stages of transition, you cannot force change on your children. You must back off and let them let them stumble, let them make mistakes, let them be angry with you, let them resent that you are maybe you're taking them away from their friends or who knows what they may feel. They may even feel like you're you've gone off the deep end and you're you're in partnership with the devil. You simply cannot try to force your children into change. I'm talking about your older children particularly. You cannot force them into change. You've got to let the Holy Spirit work in your kids. They deserve the right to change at their own pace. And you may even have a situation where your children stay after you've left. And that's very difficult, but you've got to let them make the decision at their own pace. The more you try to force them, the more they will resist you, the more they will see you as the enemy, and the more you're going to antagonize their spirit. Back off. Quit trying to indoctrinate everyone around you. Quit thinking that you have to get on Facebook and, and settle all of the, all the questions at once. Go off on everyone and show everyone how right you are. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Don't do that. And don't try to force this stuff on your children. Give them time to walk their way through this stuff. Number four, trust in the long game. Trust in the long game. Uh, your children may, may rebel. You may encounter a lot of scary moments as you're walking through. Your kids may encounter moments of crisis. They may rebel against you. They may leave church altogether and say, you know what? Screw this. I don't want anything to do with this anymore. I'm walking away. And, and you may really have some deep, deep hurt. You may even feel betrayed by your own children. As you process through that, by the grace of God, don't overreact. And if you do, make it right. Repent. Get right with them. But whatever you do, trust in the long game. Trust that God knows what He's doing and that there's a lot of life left to live. It's not over now. And you don't have to settle everything in six months or a year or two years or even five. Give God time to work. Trust Him. Release your children into God's hands. Now, Jesus is in the driver's seat. Now, I'm saying this because my wife, Gina, had a powerful dream about one of our daughters. And in the dream, Gina and I were seated in the back seat of a car. Our daughter was in the front, and there was no one driving. And in the dream, Jesus, uh, Gina knew that it was Jesus, that it was God driving the car. On either side of the car were tornadoes on my side and her side. And, and we've learned so much from this dream. God was saying so much to us about how He's in the driver's seat. We were not even in the back seat with her, like, you know, guarding her or protecting her. She's in the front. She's with the Father. We're sitting in the back seat. And we're, we don't even get to be back seat drivers, <laughs> which is so annoying. Uh, back seat drivers can be very annoying. And if you're in the back seat, it can be annoying not to get to be a back seat driver, especially if we're talking about parenting. And so the tornadoes are going all around us. And yet God was telling us, I'm in control. Trust in me. And that's been a huge dream. When uh, Gina begins to get a little bit panicky about one of our kids or whatever, I'll say, God's in the driver's seat. And she remembers that. And it gives her peace. And it gives me peace as well. So number five, let me go back through these right quick. Number one, don't rush the change. Number two, keep the presence of God working in your home. Number three, keep your kids in the loop uh, based on their age. And then number four, trust in the long game. Number five, be willing to let your older kids attend church separate from you. Ooh, that's a tough one. Release your kids into God's hand. You have to be willing because you're in a period of transition. Probably won't be this way forever. But if you have a 15-year-old that really connects with a particular youth group, but you don't connect with that church at all, be willing to drop your child off. You say, well, I, my family's got to stay together. I understand that's important. But sometimes God works in ways that are very different than we expect. And a lot of times this, I've got to have my family together, is more about control than it is about anything else. You've got to release your kids into the hands of God. You have to be willing to let your kids make some mistakes. They have to stumble. They have to make some decisions for themselves. You may find out, I've seen this a lot, that your kids will actually find the right church for you. I'm talking about your older kids especially, that they'll be the ones to sense this is a safe place. And then after a while, you'll get more comfortable going there and you may end up following your kids into a great church. But you've got to let your kids make some decisions here. And you know what? This is really, really controversial, but I still think it's true. There may even be a time when couples have to go to church separately. I've seen that happen where you've got one person that's moving. Maybe the man is moving faster than the wife is ready to move or the other way around. And I've actually had to help counsel people through saying, look, 
Just let your wife continue to go to church there. Or just let your husband continue to go to church there. You guys need to do what you need to do for your family right now. And you've, I've even seen times when the best solution was for a husband and wife for a time, for a period. You don't want that long term. I know that. But for a period of time to actually go to church separately. Now, there may be some backlash in your mind from that. You may be thinking, oh, Steve, you are way off on that. I will never do that. And, and you know what? Just pray over it and just see if maybe what I'm suggesting might actually be what needs to happen in your situation. Only God knows. And what I'm saying may not be good advice for your situation. You have to work through that. But there are some situations where it's the best solution. Number six, this is huge. Absolutely one of the biggest things I can say to you, see a counselor regularly. Find a Christian counselor, preferably one that understands the things of the Spirit, understands some of your background and where you're coming from, and go to a counselor as often as you can, at least monthly, maybe weekly if you can. Go as often as you can and see a counselor as regularly as possible. And then the last thing, and this is huge, my wife Gina would, this would be her, her advice, probably the first thing she would say, and that is have fun, party hard, celebrate, Take your kids to the movies. Buy the big popcorn. There goes the bus again. Take your kids on a trip. Uh, you can't afford to go off on some big world cruise, fine. Take them to Galveston. Go to the coast if you live in Texas. Uh, go somewhere nearby. Just take them to the park. Go do something. Move around with your kids. Have fun. Celebrate. Laugh a lot. Be silly. Lighten up. Don't take things so serious. Quit being so rigid. Quit being so legalistic about the things you laugh about. Don't be so shocked when your kids say things or do things that seem a little scandalous to you and you're scared. We're going off the deep end. Oh my God, we're losing our holiness. We're losing our virtue. We're losing our values. Loosen up. Have a little bit of fun. Party with your kids a little bit and, and just enjoy life. Watch funny movies. Um, laugh a lot. Just do whatever you can to keep the mood as light as you can possibly get it. Have fun. Live in the moment. Live in the moment. Enjoy the moment right where you are. Um, as Tom Brady once said and then uh, Patrick Mahomes quoted one play at a time. One play at a time. Get in the moment. Get in this moment and live in this moment and enjoy this moment and have fun where you are. Okay, so that's, that's some advice that I'm giving you for uh, keeping your family strong. That just scratches the surface, I'm sure. There's a lot of other things we could talk about, but I think some of those things will be helpful. Uh, this is a topic with dealing with your family that we'll probably come back to again and have some other discussion on this. But for now, be blessed. I pray for you and your family in Jesus' name. I pray that God would bless you and your family. I declare favor over you and your children. In the name of Jesus, I call forth peace into your household. I declare right now that the enemy that is fighting you in your marriage, fighting you and your children, in the name of Jesus, he is driven back. I speak in the name of Jesus. Satan, your power is broken and you have no control over my friends and over their family. You must leave. I call forth holy angels to stand as an entourage around you and your children to guide you and to guard you and to release the blessing of Abraham through you into the world around you. I call forth prosperity. I call forth, call forth health. I call forth healing. I call forth strength. And most of all, I call forth laughter. <laughs> Started to say holy laughter, but I didn't want to offend somebody. I call forth laughter. I call forth joy. I call forth celebration. Okay? Let's go for it. Let's do this together. You got this. God's got you, and you're going to make it fine. <laughs>